Good evening. I'd like to welcome Tass Welch, the minister of the Community of Christ Church, who will lead us in an invocation. Father, thank you for the hours and the details that have gone into planning this meeting, everything that's taken place beforehand. I thank you for the departments of the city of Milton, for the mayor, for the council members, all the departments, the administrators, as well as the staff, because they spend hours and uh, they do an awesome job. And I thank you for the citizens that we can all come together and voice what needs to be said and come to a place of understanding. I thank you for the vision, for the history that made up this area before it was incorporated, for the vision for the future. And I just ask you to help us live in the here and now with all of that, that whole scope, that we can see everything but live together and promote communities of hope, peace, love, and joy. And I thank you that we can gather in freedom. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Tass. And we, again, uh, always appreciate uh, all the time you've spent here. I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Milton City Council for Monday, May 18, 2009, to order. Will the city clerk please call the roll and make general announcements and silence all cell phones. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'll be happy to call roll for the May 18, 2009 regular meeting. However, I would like to remind those in attendance to please silence all cell phones at this time. Additionally, those attending the meeting who would like to provide public comment either during the public hearings or during the call for public comment, you are required to complete a public comment card prior to speaking on that item. There is no public comment for consent agenda items or items under first presentation. Those called to speak will be taken in the order that the speaker cards were received by city clerk staff prior to tonight's meeting. All speakers will identify themselves by name, address, and organization if applicable. When you hear the bell, you will have 30 seconds to complete your remarks. The city council may allow public comment on either an agenda item or a general public comment from a representative of such an organized group or association Provided, however, that such an individual shall file a notarized affidavit that they have the authority to speak on behalf of that organization. Demonstration of any sort within the chamber is prohibited, so please refrain from any applause, booing, cheering, outbursts, or dialogue with any person speaking. Please show the same respect to the person speaking that you would expect to receive yourself. As I call roll, please confirm your attendance. Mayor Joe Lockwood. Here. Council Member Karen Thurman. Here. Council Member Julie Zonner Bailey. Here. Council Member Bill Lusk. Here. Council Member Bert Hewitt. Here. Council Member Tina Diaversa. Here. Council Member Alan Tard. Here. Thank you. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Will the city clerk, please sound the first item. Mr. Mayor, our first item is agenda item number 09860, approval of the meeting agenda. St under, uh, staff would like to make uh, the following recommendations to this agenda. Under new business, add a resolution amending resolution number 070645 a resolution to appoint Mark Reed to the City of Milton Advisory Committee for the City of Milton Comprehensive Plan. This was brought forward at the work session on May the 4th. And secondly, we would like to add an executive session to discuss potential litigation. Is there any other items to be considered? I believe uh, we're adding a proclamation. Councilmember, that, that yeah. would be a council added item. If you so if you'd that, like to add that, that that's not a staff added item. You know, are there any other items to be considered? I move to approve the uh, meeting agenda as modified. I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion by Councilmember Lusk. And a second by Council Member Thurman to uh, approve the meeting agenda as modified. Any discussion? 
Community discussion? Okay. All those, in, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's unanimous. Next item is public comment. Public comment is a time for citizens to share information with the mayor and city council and to provide input and opinions on any matter that is not scheduled for its own public hearing during today's meeting. There's no discussions on items on the consent agenda or first presentation from the public or from council. Each citizen who chooses to participate in public comment must complete a comment card and submit it to the city clerk. Please remember this is not a time to engage the mayor or members of the city council in com con conversation. Excuse me. When your name is called, please come forward and speak into the microphone, stating your name and address for the record. You will have five minutes for remarks. Is there any public comment tonight? Mr. Bill Fantosi. Bill Fantosi, 12830 North Winesap Run, uh, Roswell, Georgia. I am a uh, city of Milton taxpayer. I own property here for 25 years now. Uh, my wife and I were here about three weeks ago. We don't come very often, but I like to come just to keep up and see what's happening. And there were two landscape groups here that were here for uh, uh, a petition for approval. And I was disappointed to see that Mrs. Bailey was voting on those issues uh, since she or her family both are in the landscaping business. It, I see that as a glaring conflict of interest. Uh, uh, from a legal point of view, I'm sure that Mrs. Bailey has probably checked with the city attorney, as many of you have, I suppose. But the, the legal issue is, is not the issue. The issue is public image. That is the issue. Uh, I had people call me and, and, and remark on that and say, well, why is she voting on those issues when she's in the landscape business? I said, I don't know, but it's not fair to the petitioner. It's not fair to the city council. Uh, again, I say it makes for a poor public image. And in another issue, it's not fair for the staff. The staff sits down, looks at the situation, examines all the details, makes a recommendation. If it's turned down, they have to ask themselves, why were we turned down? What, what is the problem? It's, it's obvious for someone to look around at all potential sources and say, well, is Mrs. Bailey being competitive? Is she being unfairly competitive with these people? Uh, it's a competitive business. And uh, she either, it doesn't matter if she owns the business or not, whether it's her husband or her, she profits by it. And, and I see that as a direct conflict of interest. And as a taxpayer in this city, I, I don't want my city council viewed that way. I don't want to view it that way. I have my own doubts. I don't know what's in her mind, nor do you. So again, I say it is not a legal issue. It is a public, a, a public image issue is what it is that uh, you should look into. I have no doubt that if Bill Lusk or any of the other people, Karen, someone who's in the accounting business or the church building business, that they would recuse themselves. It's the right thing to do. Not to do it is wrong, like in R-O-N-G. Thank you. That completes okay. public comment, sir. Okay. Moving on to the consent agenda, will the city clerk please sound the items? Agenda item number 09861, approval of the May 4th, 2009 regular meeting minutes. Agenda item number 09862, approval of financial statements for the period ending April 2009. Agenda item number 09863, approval of land development plats for A, Crooked Creek combination plat to combine two parcels prior to development. B, Six Hills, number three, lot 56, Milton Platt, move property line to save trees. And C, the shop at Windward Village, final plat, to create three out parcels per petition number 2003Z-0081 NFC and 2003VC-0111 NFC. Okay, do I have a motion and a second on the consent agenda? I'd like to make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as read. Second. A motion by Council Member Thurman, second by Council Member Diaverso. So All those in favor of the motion, agenda. please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Okay, moving on to reports and presentations. Will the city clerk please sound that first item? Added by motion and vote is a proclamation for Birmingham Park cleanup. Council Member Bill Lusk, Council Member Karen Thurman.
proclamation. Whereas the city of Milton is grateful for its numerous volunteers upon whom the city is dependent and who strive to make Milton a desirable place for all citizens and visitors and Whereas it is imperative that the city recognize all volunteers and encourage others to follow their example and Whereas the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints approach the city of Milton, Georgia to host a cleanup of Birmingham Park for their community day of service and Whereas on March 2nd, 2009, the mayor and city council unanimously consented to the cleanup were within the city to occur and Whereas untold hours of hard work and planning followed to organize the event and whereas in an overwhelming show of support on April 25th 2009 more than 380 volunteers participated in the cleanup and whereas five dumpsters of trash were removed one and a half miles of barbed wire fence were taken down three quarters of a mile of roadway right of life way were cleared six acres of pasture bush hog and cleared of excess tree growth and the old Taylor farmhouse was cleaned and repaired. Now therefore, we the mayor and city council of the city of Milton hereby recognize the tireless efforts and achievements of Milton citizens Gordon Hunter, Jim Brown and the members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as well as all of the hundreds of others who participated including food vendors, for their outstanding work in organizing and participation in the Birmingham Park cleanup in the city of Milton, Georgia. I just uh, want to take a minute and, and thank uh, both Jim and Gordon as well as obviously there was uh, as the proclamation says there was hundreds of other uh, citizens and volunteers but I know Gordon came to to me as well as several others here and a while back and said uh, our church wants to do do some work for the community and help out and it's just amazing with the other groups that got involved and, and how many people and and the city and the staff it's just amazing what what happened so just want to thank you for planting that seed and get it started so and, and Jim I, I, with all the emails and meetings and all that you, you guys really put in a lot of work so thanks
Okay, everybody ready? Moving on to our first presentation. Will city clerk please sound the next item? Agenda item number 09864, approval of an ordinance of the city council to authorize Fulton County to conduct election. Okay, yeah, it's first presentation. I have a motion and a second. So moved. Second. A motion by council member Diaversa, second by council member Thurman. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's unanimous. Moving on to the zoning agenda. Will the city clerk please read the zoning rules and sound the next item? At the second regularly scheduled meeting of the month, the mayor and city council consider a zoning agenda. These items include rezoning petitions, modifications of zoning use permits, and associated concurrent variances, in addition to ordinances, resolutions, and text amendments. The petition will be heard in the sequence listed on the posted agenda. I would like to acquaint you with some of the rules and procedures for this meeting. The applicant and all those speaking in support of an application will be allowed a total of 10 minutes to present the petition. The applicant may choose to save some of the time for rebuttal following the presentation by the opposition. The opposition will be allowed a total of 10 minutes to present its position. If time remains, the opposition will be allowed to rebut. Since the burden of proof is upon the applicant, the applicant will be allowed to make closing remarks provided time, remain, time remains with the allotted time. City clerk staff will be keeping track of time I will inform you periodically of the remaining time for your presentation. Those called to speak will be taken in order that the speaker cards will receive by city clerk staff. All speakers will identify themselves by name, address, and organization, if applicable, before their presentation. The Planning Commission heard the rezoning items and recommendations have been forwarded to the Mayor and City Council for consideration. In addition, the applicant shall not submit material to the Council during the meeting unless requested to do so. All material that you wish to be reviewed by council in consideration of your application should be submitted to the Department of Community Development. When an opponent of a rezoning action has made within two years immediately preceding the filing of the rezoning action being opposed, campaign contributions aggregating $250 or more to a local government official of the local government which will consider the application, it shall be the duty of the opponent to file a disclosure with the governing authority of the respective local government at least five days to the Planning Commission meeting. A violation of the relevant state statute content constitutes a misdemeanor and therefore if you've contributed $250 or more to a council member and you have not filed a disclosure prior to the planning commission meeting, the city attorney's office strongly suggests you have someone else speak on your point of view. Our first item and only uh, item on the zoning agenda is 09813. This is U09-01 slash VC09 at 13120 Arnold Mill Road by Frank Schaefer, the Landscape Group Incorporated to obtain a use permit for a landscaping business on 1.74 acres at a density of 3908.04 square feet per acre. This is Article 19.4.27. Applicant is also requesting a three-part concurrent, concurrent variance. Number one, to delete the 50-foot buffer and 10-foot improvement setback along the west property line from the right-of-way for a distance of 140 feet. 12H.3.1, section C.1. Number two, to delete the 50 foot buffer and 10 foot improvement setback along the east property line from the right of way for a distance of 140 feet. 12H.3.1, section C.1. And number three, to allow a sign located less than 10 feet from the right of way, Article 33, section 21C. First presentation of this item was on March the 2nd, 2009. It was deferred on April 27th, 2009. Ms. Alice Wakefield. As was um, stated, this is a request for a use permit for a landscape business with a related three-part concurrent variance. This matter was before 
the mayor and city council on April the 27th, at which time a deferral was granted to allow the applicant and the staff the opportunity to resolve issues related to the location of the existing well and the above ground tank in relations to the uh, septic tank and the line. Although it was staff's intention to have these issues resolved or at least have an answer for this body uh, by this meeting, we still have not resolved all of, we're well not resolved all the issues. We have not uh, obtained all of the information. We're still waiting for some additional information from the health department and some additional information from the septic contractor that was hired by the applicant. Uh, so staff's recommendation is for deferral and Ms. Robin McDonald will uh, add some additional information. Good evening. I won't bore you with the entire uh, review of it, but um, just to add on to what Alice had said, um, the applicant has talked to a um, contractor for the septic, and um, we believe there's an under that the tank that exists is going to be too small, but we haven't heard from the health department of what is exactly would be required as far as the size of a septic tank. Um, he's also talked to a well contractor, and their intent um, is to relocate the well tank storage um, to the warehouse um, structure. And um, Mr. Schaefer can answer any more of those questions about that. Uh, what we're looking for right now from the health department is to get an exact idea of how large the, um, the new septic system should be because that would uh, affect how and how the uh, applicant can revise the site plan per uh, your instruction at the last meeting. So therefore staff um, does also uh, recommend and support the applicant's uh, recommendation or request to defer this till the June 15th meeting. Okay, before we go into um, any public comment, is there any questions of staff from the council? And uh, at this point, if there's any, I'd like to hear from those speaking in support of this application. Mr. Shaver, did you wish to speak? Hello, how are you doing? Frank Shaver, 1041 Hidden Hollow Drive, Marietta, Georgia. Been there for 31 years. Love Georgia. Uh, just, uh, I represent the landscape group. I'm the treasurer, quote, investor. And uh, we have made every effort to uh, satisfy what the city of Milton requires of us. And uh, I'm glad that Robin spoke up. We have made every effort to get in touch with uh, uh, Monica Robinson, and she has not returned her calls. We we called her uh, even as a matter of late last night, uh, last, twice uh, yesterday, and still don't get any calls back. So I'm looking for your help here on this. If you can, or Robin, uh, I don't know what to do. And, but uh, as far as the septic tank, uh, we, our position really is that it's been grandfathered in. It was probably put in 40 or 50 years ago. And, and really is important for that little house. The house is only 800 square foot. Um, as far as the distance of the well, I talked to the plumber who maintains the well for us. And he says that well is located where the water is accessible for, for use. Uh, in our property. Uh, I would like to have Richard Brown talk. Uh, he knows quite a bit of the history of the uh, location at 13120 on Mill Road. So Richard. Hi, my name again is Richard Brown. My num uh, address is 4730 Atlanta Highway. I'm a friend of Frank's and them and uh, knew the previous owners that uh, David Dent that had it before and uh, Consuelo can't think of her last name, that had it previous, they were the parties that built the building down below and did the improvements on the property and so forth. And uh, I wasn't able to make the last meeting. I was running late. And Anyways, long story short, Frank filled me in on some of the information that was uh, from the last meeting, but um, uh, some other people that I've talked to on some various <coughs> other properties, um, I wasn't sure, especially date, uh, taking the house being built sometime in the 40s, 
um, late 40s, that's the time frame it was built, why there was an issue with the septic tank that was pre-existing from back that time as well as the well. And in regards to the size of the well, not the well, but the septic tank of being around 500 gallons or so, uh, the plumber that Frank and them used to maintain the well and so forth, um, he didn't put the septic tank in, but he just guessed that it was probably at least around 500 gallons or so. But being that it was, you know, the septic tank was so old, it's anybody's guess. He wasn't there when they drained it quite a while back. That was probably the only way to, I guess, actually check how big it is. So they were just guessing on what it might be. Um, and with the well scenario, putting the pump and everything inside the house, not the pump, putting um, the pressure tank and some of the other stuff inside the, um, the uh, shed down below or the shop or whatever you want to call it down there, that's possible, but the, the well itself, even where the pump and so forth come out of the ground, it's still going to stick out of the ground a good probably 30 inches or at least two feet out of there. So by changing it, that main piece is still going to be there. They can't drive around that. Um, and, uh, and I'm not sure of the, uh, by doing that, if they can, quote, eliminate the well house, because I'm still, I mentioned it to the plumber the other day, isn't it possible the well could still freeze? He didn't really think about that. And he, he said, well, it's possible. He didn't say for sure or not. But moving the tanks and so forth, I'm not sure is going to satisfy things. In other words, give them space or so forth. Um, and especially with their trucks and the trailers and stuff, it would be difficult to turn in that, that location there to make that full turn because that's why they were asking for the variance on the one side there to have that additional, I guess you'd say, swing to come around it. And then uh, again with the, the thought of the house and the, and the uh, septic tank as it stands now, whatever the size may be on that, it's like I was telling Frank before, it used to be a home, a family home with a washer and dryer and two bedrooms and so forth, where now it's an office and predominantly there's only one person there that just uses the restroom. They don't, you, they don't have a, a, a kitchen anymore and a sink and a laundry room and all that kind of stuff that doesn't exist. So the use as it was intended from the past with two or three people living there doesn't exist today. It's very minimal use. So that's all I got to say. Any questions? Any questions? Let's, let's wait till the next. Okay. That completes uh, comments that all in a favor. Comment? Is yes, there, sir. No, none in opposition. There none. Okay. Um, is there any questions for either the applicant or staff from the council? Bill? Uh, a question or I was the one who generated that issue last week. I hate to see us head down the wrong path here. I didn't intend to uh, direct it the wrong way. My point was, uh, and the question was, the distance between the well and the septic field itself in the public health department uh, obviously uh, dictates the separation between the well and the septic field. Where I was headed with that is if they were not far enough apart, according to the health department, uh, I guess that'd be a decision up to the health department. If that were true, maybe the well could be relocated, and I don't want to run Mr. Schaefer into a lot of uh, additional costs that he doesn't have to, but from a public health standpoint, there may be an issue there. And if the well needed to be relocated, uh, possibly Right. I, I did have contact with Monica Robinson at the health department um, in two ways. He, she did send comments, but they were boilerplate comments that she would send for any other rezoning that involved or use permit that involved a septic tank and a, um, a well. 
I did talk to her personally, and I was waiting to get it in writing. She made a statement to me over the phone, and I didn't want to present it to you until I had it in writing. But she gave me the idea that she didn't. It didn't really matter the separation, but she was more concerned with changing it from a residential use to a commercial use, um, the size and capacity of the septic system. And that's why it's kind of turned to the septic system because that was the response I got from the health department was um, at that point in time when I talked to her on the phone, I didn't know what the size of the septic tank was because she said it, really, it didn't, they wouldn't have to move the well, but they were more concerned with the safety of the septic system. And she had made a statement that even a 750 gallon tank isn't even approved for residential. So I'm waiting to hear what is it that they're going to require of them to replace the existing tank. And that when you have a rezoning from a residential to a commercial use, therefore it kicks in all sorts of different rules with the health department. So even though it may be, there may be less use of plumbing, it doesn't matter to the, you know, the maximum occupancy. They take the maximum occupancy of the building, which is eight. We calculated it through the building through Melissa. And I gave that information to the health department, and that's what I'm waiting for is how much, how big of a septic system will eight people require for that site. So I guess to get back to your original question, she was not concerned about the distance of the well from the water. All she said that they, they would require some testing of the water, but other than that, they weren't, it sounded like to me they weren't going to require them to move the well, but she just concentrated on the health of the septic system. Before I need more questions, I need to close this public hearing since there's no more public comment on that, so the public hearing is now closed. Any other questions from staff, from council? Well, I do have one question because I'm, I guess I'm still confused as to how this changes the application other than, other than the, the septic system that they may or may not have and may need to amend. In terms of the, the variances that they're asking for, it looks as if we're going to be considering the same variances because there's not going to be a change. Well, I basically, once we know what size septic, we'll have a better picture about how they can work around the, the site plan. So that was so the it reasoning. totally, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, good. maybe it's for the better, maybe it's for the worse. I can't say until we get more information from the health department to know exactly what they're going to require. So. Uh, and Robin, also, if, if, if I'm clear, you are going to be getting from Monica Robinson confirmation about that distance between the well and the Right, and that's field. what I was waiting for, a written confirmation, right. but what she sent to me was a boilerplate, whatever would have applied to a situation like that. And immediately I emailed her and I left her messages, please give me a distance, sure. please give me information. So I haven't heard from her since it, last so week. So the expectation between now and I guess that June 15th date that the applicant has requested? Right, that we that would hopefully get an time. answer, yeah, and then they would have an opportunity to revise their site plan in adequate enough time to be able to get back to y'all. Thank you. Is there any other questions? I'd like to make a motion to defer agenda item 09813 to the June 15th meeting. I'll second it. I have a motion by Council Member Hewitt, second by Council Member Thur Thurman for a deferral of this uh, application. Council discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's unanimous. Okay, we're, there are no items on under unfinished business. We've got one new new business. What's and we've got one under new business. Right. Because so I said it wrong. No items under unfinished business and moving on to Good. new business. We added by motion to vote. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A resolution amending resolution number 070645, a resolution appointing Mark Reed to the City of Milton Advisory Committee for the City of Milton Comprehensive Plan. Ms. Councilmember Thurman? Yes, um, my position for uh, the CPAC has recently become available. The person that was doing it for me is no longer um, been 
capable of doing it or willing to do it. And Mark Reed serves currently as our chairman of our Parks and Rec Committee. And I just felt like normally I wouldn't put anyone in at this last late time in the planning process, but I think since parks are an integral part of the comprehensive plan, that it would be nice to have um, him serve on the CPAC committee as a liaison between the Parks Committee and the CPAC. So I would ask that we appoint him for a, uh, the term ending December 31st, 2009. Okay. Is there any uh, council questions? Got a motion. All right. I have a motion. Yes, I put forward a motion to approve the amendment of resolution number 070645, appointing Mark Reed to the City of Milton Advisory Committee for the City of Milton Comprehensive Plan Update Process. Second. There's a motion by Council Member Bailey, a second by Council Member Diaversa. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Okay. And Mayor, I told him you could just swear him in tomorrow night at the work session so he didn't have to come tonight. Swear him in or swear him in, swear him in or something. <laughs> okay, moving on to. Right. Mayor Johnson. Just, no, I have the wrong thing there. Well, just listen to the mayor. <laughs> you should, I should know you know. Moving on to council reports. Do I have any council reports? I don't believe that Bill and I ever gave a report after our meeting with John Whelan a couple weeks ago. Um, I, I guess one of the main reasons we probably didn't is because there really wasn't a whole lot to report on. Both Chris Lagerblum and Alice were at the meeting with us. Um, I mean, I think it was a good meeting, but there was no nothing definite that came out of it other than that John is maybe considering a modification to his current plan to get rid of some of the townhomes and do more cluster type homes, um, but not change the overall density. He does understand that would have to come back before the in, entire council. And we did ask him to, uh, to get with JT Adams just to view JT's plan and talk to him about it to see since some of the properties that are included on JT's plan happen to actually be owned by John Whelan. We thought it would probably be important for the two of them to, to get together and talk. Bill, is there anything else you can think of that? Um, I think he was impressed with what he had seen Mr. Adams had presented and was uh, understood the uh, benefit of working together down there to uh, uh, bring that whole concept or the, the whole community together. So uh, it, was, it was positive feedback from Mr. Whelan. And the kind of the premise for the meeting was the fact just to talk with him about what we can, ideas that we can do to make Crabapple an actual viable area and get rid of the, uh, the barren dirt that resides there now that I think a lot of the residents would love to see developed and trees planted and everything else and he seemed obviously it's in his benefit uh, if we can you know, get something going and if he can he seemed willing to try to help us with whatever we wanted to do and to you know, participate in anything that we were thinking about with crab apple but nothing definite other than that he was going to talk to JT and as of last Friday I know they had not spoken so I'd like to remind everyone a week from today is uh, Memorial Day and at 10 o'clock in the morning we will have our Memorial Day celebration, the second annual. And at 10 o'clock we have confirmation. At 10 o'clock sharp we'll have a flyover from the Tiger Flight Foundation. Uh, our keynote speaker, Lieutenant General Roy Beauchamp, is uh, geared up and ready to go. He's uh, anxious to come down here and speak with everyone, and I'm anxious to hear him. Uh, aside from that, there are a lot of other activities going on, and I'd encourage everybody to show up. Uh, we have, uh, as of this date, uh, identified uh, 86 uh, fallen veterans who are uh, members of families of uh, residents here in Milton. Will, as of this time tomorrow, have all 86 uh, of those markers planted along Deerfield Parkway. And I'd like to uh, thank Rick Morig and uh, Dennis Potts for helping in, in this uh, initiative. I just want to say um, thank you for to, to everybody, and uh, Dennis and Rick, thank you. I was in Bill's office the other day and, and saw 
all the marketers and the work you've been doing. So thank you very much for getting this going. It's it's really neat to see see how it's grown from last year, and uh, a great thing we're all honored to to be able to be a part of. So thank you for that. Is there any other council reports? I do have one. Um, I just wanted to let you all know that on May 13th, uh, Council Member Diaversa and Council Member um, Hewitt um, and Sergeant Adrian um, Samanowski met. And um, what we discussed during that meeting was the uh, formation of a community policing initiative. Um, and without going into the, the details of all that, because staff will provide a, a report um, of that initiative. But um, basically, um, it would encourage the formation of additional neighborhood watch programs in the city of Milton as well as support existing programs that are already existing and um, include several other initiatives as well. So um, I took minutes to the meeting and uh, provided those to Chris and I'll be giving him a final copy of those minutes and I'm sure uh, Chris will send those to you all. Okay, anything else? Let's move on to staff reports. Getting with our city manager. Mayor, I've got a couple tonight, but it shouldn't take uh, too long. One, I want to let you know that we have tested the Granicus system tonight. Uh, we spent a day in training today, so um, we'll be rolling that out soon. Soon you will be streaming over the web uh, during these meetings, um, and that's a, that's a good thing for our citizen involvement. The streaming will occur from the beginning of the meeting, from the call to order until it is adjourned. Whether we adjourn into executive session or not, this room will continue to be recorded. So I just... Uh, want to say that to, to remind everybody that uh, what happens in this room will be uh, subject to viewing by anybody who wants to see it um, going forward. Not that uh, that's a big issue. Mid-year budget uh, will be bringing you forward a mid-year budget. I know there's been many requests, uh, many questions as to where we are specifically in light of having headlines that say $1.9 million shortfall in Milton amongst other things. Um, I can tell you that a better part of last week was spent towards evaluating the budget so that we were comfortable as a staff bringing forward something at the mid-year to you that would um, that would balance uh, through the end of the fiscal year. And, and I can tell you that as of last week, uh, the staff has, at least Stacy and I, have gotten comfortable with how we do that. Uh, it is being evaluated by the department heads at this point, uh, one final glance before we bring it forward to you on June the 2nd. But uh, there is some comfort in knowing that uh, the, the budget uh, at this point is at a level to be balanced, which I don't think will result in the citizens seeing any uh, decline in service to the end user. It shouldn't look as though um, we have uh, we have done much. Obviously, we've had to tweak some places, and there will be some slight areas of, of modification needed. But I'm, I'm happy to report that um, we were able to uh, be very, very. Um, we, we got pretty intense and into that document, and, and we found some places that we could. Um, become more efficient or otherwise uh, just uh, reduce costs in this environment. So that's a good thing. Um, on a third issue, I'd hope to bring this forward to you tonight for approval, but just couldn't get it to the agenda in time, um, is the award of a contract in our city hall space and needs analysis that we've talked about. Um, it will be one of those that I will uh, get to you at some point later this week, hopefully um, for then ratification on a, for, at a, a future consent agenda. Um, I'd like to uh, tell you that we did go through a competitive bid process. Uh, we screened the responses that we got. We, we got to a top five and interviewed those personally. Uh, we then opened the cost envelopes and compared that to the scope of service. Um, and I'm very comfortable uh, to tell you tonight that our staff recommendation is going to be that we award that contract to Lyman, Davidson, and Dooley um, for that scope of service. In the audience tonight is Ben Starks, uh, who will be kind of our point of contact. He manages the government suite of Lyman, Davidson, and Dooley. And uh, Ben came tonight to introduce himself to you. I'm hoping he's doing something in the background so you know which one he is. Um, that's Ben, and when we have a little bit of a break here, potentially between the staff reports and executive session, he might just introduce himself to you if you're, if you're good with that. But I want to let you know we're moving forward in that process. Uh, Carter's got one item, and uh, that should do our, pub or do our uh, staff reports for the night. If you haven't yet, you will shortly receive an invitation to a luncheon on um, May 29th, Friday afternoon, in honor of our Public Works Week. Public Works Week is recognition for all the public works employees throughout the nation, and it is actually this week. We'll be doing it the Friday after um, Memorial Day. Awesome. Okay. Any other staff? Yes, Chris. That's what we have. Councilmember Bailey. Uh, 
Yes, sir. Uh, Chris, just as a function of um, the community and Wheeland, and, and because that was one of the items, I just wondered if separate from this evening, if we could get an update from staff in terms of where we are on the Wheeland development with regards to the EPA issues and the stream buffers as well as the um, remediation of those issues because I had thought that that might be part of what we were going to get an update on. So if we can just get an update on that from staff, um, I, I think we owe some information back to the community. So if we could do that subsequent to this evening, that would be really helpful. I think folks are awaiting an update on a number of those items, including the items that came out of the BZA as well as the EPA um, fines. Uh, they did mention that they were working with those two communities and hope to have something resolved within the next couple weeks with both Six Hill and Kensington Farms. So. so if we can just, if staff can provide an update, that would be really helpful. Okay. City Clerk, please sound the next item. Added by motion and vote is an executive session, and the purpose is to discuss potential litigation. Do I have a motion or a second? I move to adjourn the meeting to executive session to discuss lit litigation. What was the other thing? Potential litigation. Oh, lit second. Potential litigation. I have a motion by Council Member Tart, second by Council Member Diaverso. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's unanimous, 653.